Okay, quick review here of atomic structure. If you'll recall from the build an atom FET, you pulled protons, which I've got here red with the positive, and neutrons, which are the open black circles here. You pulled protons and neutrons into the nucleus of the atom. And then in the energy levels, orbits or shells that were um, placed in, which you have as circles around the, the nucleus, we place the electrons. So in this case, you see one, two, three, four, five electrons. So just to be aware then, we have protons and neutrons in the center of the atom, which we call the nucleus. And be aware then that the most of the mass of the atom comes from these protons and neutrons. Therefore, when you're figuring out the atomic mass here, it's the sum of the protons and the neutrons. So let's remember this number here, right? has to be the total of the protons and the neutrons. Now, you'll notice here we've got one, two, three, four, five protons. So right away, that tells you the atomic number. All right, so, and it identifies the element for you also. So if you looked up on a periodic table, you would find that atomic number five is boron. And so to come up with the standard atomic notation here, the element notation, we have five as the atomic number, capital B for boron. So again, how did I know this? It was the protons. Protons are key, right? They identify the element. A particle that has five protons in the nucleus is a, pro a particle of boron. Now, is it an atom or an ion? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So protons tell us the atomic number. Mass comes from the protons and the neutrons. So we add these up. There's five protons here and there's six neutrons. So five plus six is 11. And so we get the, I'll just indicate what we did here, five plus six, right? So that gives us a mass of 11. And so in the standard notation, we have the 11 is the superscript here, the five is the subscript and B is boron for the symbol. Now, you'll notice that there is no charge here, right? I'm purposely not writing a charge. And why is that? Check out the electrons. We have, as we said, one, two, three, four, five. We have five electrons. And we also had five protons, right? So when you have five protons and five electrons, every positive here cancels every negative here for a net charge of zero. And that's why you don't see any charge here. So when the element notation looks like this, right? Well, we see the symbol B, so right away we can say, okay, that's gonna be boron. Atomic number is the number at the bottom. So here we are looking down at the five. Maybe switch colors here. Okay, then the mass, right? The mass is the 11, which we again realize is the protons and the neutrons. So atomic number tells me the number of protons. So I'll color code that. So I knew, I knew this because of this, right? Because it was here. There's the atomic number. And the neutrons, right? How am I gonna figure out the neutrons? Well, the mass is 11, right? And this number, the five plus this number has to equal 11. So if I just subtract them, if I subtract the mass minus atomic number, that'll give me the number of neutrons. So. 11 minus five is six, so we have six neutrons. Now, electrons, well, there's no charge here, so that means the protons and electrons have to be the same. So what I've just done here is fill in these values, right? And it's for this notation, which I've already explained how that not notation develops, right? By showing you this picture. So just to be clear here that this number at the bottom, this is the atomic number, right? It identifies the element. It's always the number of protons. Okay. And the mass number, right, is this number up top. So do we have a neutral atom or an ion? Well, hopefully you can see with the protons and neutrons being equal that we have an atom. Okay. Checking out the notation for the next one. Ah, there's a charge there. So right away, as soon as you see that charge, that tells you that you have an ion. Okay, so we can still work the protons and neutrons the same way. The fact that it's an electron, or sorry, that it's an ion, just means that the 
protons and electrons are not going to be equal anymore, okay, for ions. So let's still deal with the nucleus. Nothing's changed with the nucleus other than it's specifically atomic number 15. So instead of five protons, there's now 15 protons. So we have atomic number 15, which means 15 protons, which, by the way, that symbol was phosphorus. So that's the element involved, but it's, you know, it's now going to be an ion. We see the charge. Okay, let's figure out the neutrons again, because again, the nucleus, right, it's going to be the same whether it's an atom or an ion. You just, you got the mass, 31 minus 15, to give us the 16 neutrons. Right, so knowing again that the protons and neutrons add up to the mass, if you know the mass and the protons, you can just subtract to get the neutrons. Now electrons. Okay, here's the trick when we have an ion. Let's just make a, a brief, brief comment here about an ion. If you have a positive ion, right, that means that the protons are greater than the electrons. So a positive ion means you have more positive particles, more protons. Okay, if you have a negative ion, then it means that there's more negative particles. So the electrons are greater than the protons. So this is more electrons. Alrighty then. So if we're going to follow this idea, right, you see that we have a negative charge here. Oh, I didn't fill in my mass today. Better go back and fill in the mass of 31. Okay, so all we have left to do here are the electrons. I've got 15 protons. And the charge on the ion is negative 3. So there should be more electrons than protons. How many more? Well, 3 more, because the charge is negative 3. So what number should go here so that we have 3 more electrons than protons? If I only have 15, right? If I only have 15, then that's a neutral atom, right? But if we need to have more electrons, I need to have 3 more electrons, then I've got to bump that up to 18. So now we can see I have 15 positives and 18 negatives. So there's three more negatives, which makes sense for this negative three charge right there. Okay, last row here. You've been given the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So right away, if you know the protons, right? Right away, you know how many red protons are in there. Right? That's going to tell you the atomic number, and it's going to identify the element for you right away. So 8 protons, atomic number 8. Go ahead and look that up on the periodic table. You'll find it's oxygen. So I can already fill in the symbol and the atomic number. Now mass. Again, mass is going to come from the nucleus, right? The mass of the atoms in the nucleus. So protons and neutrons. 8 plus 7 gives us 15. There we go, so I'll fill in the 15 here. Now, is this an atom or an ion? Well, let's check the protons and electrons. Oh, they're the same. So when the protons and electrons are the same, you've got the same positive and the same negative particles, then there's no charge overall. The net charge is zero. And so we have an atom, which means that I'm not going to put a charge there. Okay, so a quick review of atomic structure.